Dr. John, welcome to Iraq. We are at the Hammurabi headquarters in Erbil. Recently you have visited the liberated villages of the Nineveh Plain, which were occupied and religiously cleansed by the Islamic State. What impressions have you brought back from your visit? All right, well, there have been many very strong and vivid impressions. Uh, I've been traveling to the area frequently since 2007. I've made many of the, my visits there with Rabita Pascal. And so I know the area uh, fairly well and have seen the changes that have taken place. And the first impression uh, that I, I uh, that was very vivid in my mind as we traveled from Erbil Air, to the Nineveh Plain was upon the outskirts of Kadermlesh, all of a sudden the flags changed. When I had traveled to the region, say 2007, 2008, and on up until the Islamic State uh, conquered the area, there were flags of the KRG, the Kurdish Autonomous Region, everywhere uh, we went. Today, or, or recently, as I traveled there, on the outskirts of uh, Karimlesh, the KRG flags came to an end, and all of a the sudden there were a multitude of Ali flags uh, representing Shiite uh, militias and the villages that we visited were under the control and occupation of mainly uh, the Shiite dominated Babylonian uh, brigade combined with the Christian unit of the uh, the NPU. So there's been a, a major uh, uh, military change in the area in terms of the occupying force and of course that has implicate political implications for the area. But then as we got penetrated uh, the region, um, we could see the extensiveness of the destruction. These villages that I got to know and to love very well are now completely burnt out. There's extensive destruction, although most of the, the villages uh, and the buildings have not been completely destroyed. Um, almost all of them have suffered uh, uh, from vandalism, most of them from fires, the Islamic State tried to destroy the villages through fires uh, as they withdrew, and um, there no, there's no running water, there's no electricity, and I was visiting ghost towns. There were no residents, there were just some military, the police and military, and a very few people uh, from the local uh, municipal council cleaning up. So those were the, the most immediate and the strongest impressions that uh, I came back with. Ms. Pascal, you were a resident of Karakosh and you've been recently in there. How did you feel when you returned uh, to Karakosh? Difficult to say it, really. When you go to your home, to your house, and you see it's not your, your property in a sense that it was so vandalized, so so looted, so um, badly treated. You you know near to be destroyed. But uh, we we had chance that my house was not burned. But uh, even if they were trying to do it, and it was not the the fire was not really arrived to the, inside the house. Um, I saw the other houses of my friends. It's horrible to see that. No sin for that, no cause, no, no reason that you, you get your, your, your home is, exists no more. So this kind of hatred of people and this kind of, of uh, uh, how to look to others is a huge question. Why, what Christian did to this ISIS? Why this ISIS? program was concentrating on Christian more than others, uh, in a sense, even if they did for others too, even Muslims, they were victims of areas where are only Muslims, like uh, Ambar, like Mosul itself, like, but when you see uh, the difference is that all those, they have some reasons, they are fighting for a power, they are fighting for money. They are fighting between themselves because they are sectarian problems in the Shia. The Christians, we don't understand till now 
why when they were most peaceful people in the area when they are not really uh, in, in encroaching any area of others uh, they were not stable they were not free they were not you know even before dash one or two years we were feeling dash action around us because dash for us is not coming from the heaven it's not first time unfortunately of dash story in our life in our in our history um, but it was in different different kind of, uh, of ways i was just thinking two days ago about my daughter's questions uh, 18 years old why why we why we will be like that yes um, while being there, Dr. John, did you see families returning home? Well, there were a few families that, that we saw. They were returning home not to stay permanently, but to clean out you know, the, their ruined uh, homes, to burn rubbish that had been left behind, to take away some valuables that might still have, have been there, to survey the scene. Uh, but there was nobody coming back to move, to say uh, the place is a ghost town. Uh, there are very few people uh, around, and those that were coming were just coming uh, not to stay even overnight, just to come during the day and to look at their property and see what might be done with it. We spoke to some of those people, and uh, none of them expressed any um, uh, strong plan um, to return. None of them said, yes, we're coming back. It's all an open question. Um, Ms. Pascal, what are the obstacles to the return of the displaced population uh, at this stage? Many and complex obstacles. Um, first of all, is security. Serious issue of security is that Impossible to tell people, oh, go back, nothing is uh, an obstacle for you, uh, everything is okay, uh, freedom is uh, sustainable. No way. Because uh, those people has already lost their, their confidence in their security tools. Because those security tools abandoned them two years ago to Daesh very easily without any fighting. So now they were saying, oh, we will be back to go back to the same level of, of uh, from where we, we came, no. So for us, uh, security reconstruction is the, the main point uh, with people of the area, young people who has to be, to, who are obliged because of their situation to be involved in security tools, army, police, uh, uh, service, secret service, etc. And um, uh, not only this, with other Iraqi army who will be with them, we need international presence. We need a real force for training, for new technology training, for also uh, this kind of of reconciliation uh, and regaining a new uh, trust of people on their uh, two security tools. It's difficult to say uh, it was easy for anybody. And don't forget, everything is near to be destroyed. Even what, what we have there is something no more good to be used because it's expired, it's, it's so, so, uh, uh, in, in a very uh, bad way and dirty way, uh, 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 you know, occupying houses in that way, you are not able to use anything of what is still there because everything, a valuable thing, were stool uh, or electricity thing, etc. But what still is no more uh, good to be used? So uh, they have to be compensated. To, to be able to go to their houses too. And may I just say that security is the, the, the biggest issue and the biggest obstacle 
that has to be overcome. I've seen in other places, like in Syria, in homes where there's been extensive damage uh, once the Islamist rebels left the old city of, of homes, very quickly people returned uh, because they felt a sense of security that there was a government that was going to you know, protect them. Um, and so in these cases, people do return. But in Nineveh, you have so-called disputed areas. They were already liberated in 2003. The people of Nineveh have been thoroughly liberated uh, according to the, um, the conquering powers, but no, none of these powers has actually liberated them to the point where they have security in their own uh, home area. So this is a, a very big concern for those who have been displaced. They don't want to come back and get caught up in the wars of other people uh, among those parties that are uh, in conflict with each other over this disputed territory that doesn't actually belong to them. Uh, the Christians and Yazidis and other the, the uh, powerless minorities find themselves in the middle of this struggle uh, for disputed territory. And until that is uh, resolved, uh, many of the original inhabitants will be very reluctant to come back uh, because they fear that, yes, they may be back a year or two years, five years, maybe even ten years, and then that there will be a new... Um, new uh, violent conflict that will make them flee. Um, Ms. Pascal, do you see much hope that these obstacles would be overcome in the near future? Yes and no. Yes, if there is a serious, um, uh, you know, consideration and reconsideration of this existence of Christian in Iraq. If there is a possibility to be their situation to be a subject of governmental agenda, if it's in Baghdad and especially in Baghdad, or in the north, in the north to leave people uh, uh, determine their 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 own uh, path, what they have to do, where they have to, uh, to to go for. So for government, I think it's it's important that government today. I was happy because I heard that. Many ministries were uh, trying to visit and to see, and the uh, Council of Ministers was there, uh, Office of Council of Ministers was there to see what we have to do. But it seems there is very little a narrow way of seeing things. They always uh, think before of all about how the governmental institution to be rebuilded, to be rehabilitated, which is good but it's not the first thing which is more difficult or, more, or, or the most important thing uh, when, when people are completely, uh, uh, you know, um, displaced. The most important thing is to, to see the housing projects, the situation of the houses, the church, the, 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 the life of people, how they can come and sit down in their own houses. So I am happy that one of our um, colleague was there who is member of uh, city council there and um, he told them please go and visit church and visit houses how people are in which situation if they if you think people have to be back how you will bring people back like this the houses are completely burned so you have to, to you know they were not maybe even thinking to go inside the houses only governmental institutions to see what to do for those government institutions like, you know, electricity, like a hospital, like which is also essential because it's also an infrastructure um, issue. But when you see uh, people are, first of all, seeing their houses, how they will be there, how they can secure their, their children inside somewhere where even the, the, the pollution is, has to, to have a time to to clean this area because you have so many poisons everywhere uh, where they were um, making uh, weapons, those uh, ISIS uh, uh, diabolic uh, movement. Uh, so we have to, um, to see it's not an easy issue. Uh, no, because we are not yet ensured that our neighbors will leave us 
free to live like we would like to live, like Christian and not like other things. Dr. John, when talking about the liberated lands in the Nineveh Plain, talking about Karakosh, Karamlesh, and Bortola, how do you see the future of that region uh, with respect to the displaced population? Well, the displaced will stay displaced unless they uh, have confidence that they'll be able to live in peace and security and have some prospect for uh, prosperity in, in the future. And I don't uh, use the term uh, liberated areas because uh, I believe that that language should only be used at, the, at such time when people are free to go back and to live in peace and security and those c conditions don't exist. So I uh, regard these not as liberated villages, but reconquered villages. And now they've been reconquered, and that's a very good thing that the Islamic State has been uh, driven out. But the big question uh, remains now, will the people actually finally experience a liberation? And liberation for them will mean that the disputes that the outside powers have over their land comes to an end, that there's a political settlement uh, whereby those outside powers are prepared to provide guarantees to the original inhabitants of those areas where they will say, you can go back to your villages, we will make sure that uh, you can live in peace, we will not claim land, we'll not try to change the demographics of the region, which has been an old game that everybody has been playing for a very long time at the expense of the religious minorities. When that happens, then there will be uh, a situation that merits uh, the name liberation. Uh, but so far, I don't see any clear sign of that political uh, understanding, that kind of political agreement. We hope that it comes, but as far as I can see, these territories are still disputed. Dr. John, Ms. Pascal, thank you very much.